How can you find time to write in today's busy world? Hey, we can help with that. Hello, and welcome to the Writing Momentum Podcast. I'm Christopher Maselli. I'm here with my wife, Gina. How are you doing, Gina? I'm doing good. I'm yes. doing really well. Hey, you ought to be doing well, because today we're going to talk about a subject that is, I think, dear to both of our hearts, mm -hmm. because we've been writing for over 30 years. I feel old now. That's where the gray hair comes from. And one of the things that we've had to do over the years is find ways that we can find time to write. Mm -hmm. Because we, this is a busy world, isn't it? It's very busy. I think a lot of people find themselves just pulled in so many different directions. They have something on their heart that they want to write. They have an idea that yeah. they want to write. Or they feel like they've got a book that would help their business even. But finding the time to write is the biggest obstacle that people have to overcome. Yeah. And it's easy to say, oh, if it's important enough to, you'll do it. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, in today's world, I think everything feels important, mm -hmm. right? And so it's very hard to say it's not your number one priority because for a lot of us, it is. It's just that there are so many high priorities in our lives. It's just hard to find out. And I think that's it. For me, sometimes it's the fact that there seems to be so much noise. Mm -hmm. There's so many things grabbing for my attention and they're important things. This doesn't mean that these are just throwaway things right. that it's, like, oh, if I were just more organized, I wouldn't have to deal with that. No. These are real life things. This is a real life obstacle. And I think, honestly, that's why we find that in the writing world, so many people start writing later in life. Yep. They start after their children leave. They start and they're empty nesters. They start maybe when they're starting that second phase of life. Mm -hmm. And they also have something to say. I think there's something that happens as you get older. You've got more wisdom and more perspective and more to say. But I think there's also that they'll, their life kind of calms down a little bit. And maybe. And a lot of them will tell you that, boy, they feel like they're volunteering in more places and doing yeah. more stuff and taking care of grandkids. It's everyone's got things that they've got to I do. Yes, that's true. But there are techniques that we have found that really help us actually find time mm -hmm. to get our writing done because we do this full time. Right. And believe me when I say there's a lot going on in our lives. And so we have to find time to get our writing done and not just our writing for our business, but also our personal stuff that we mm -hmm. want to write that we want to get out there. So Gina, what would you say is one of the ways that you find time to write? I, I think one of the big things is keeping the vision before you. Mm. And I think that's, I know that can seem maybe more ethereal, but I think having that in front of you so that it doesn't get lost in all of that noise of all these other commitments. And that can happen from putting even just a little post-it note that you put on your mirror in the morning so that you see it, you know, have you written today? It could be putting a reminder on your phone or on put that post-it note on your refrigerator or someplace where you go to on your desk, maybe in the corner of your monitor or something like that. I just think there's something about keeping the vision before you that is really motivating yeah. for people. And, yeah. and it helps them mo be motivated to find time to write. Yeah, that, that's just the thing. A lot of times we get so busy that even though we want to write, other things take priority and, and the writing, that idea of writing slips out of our mind mm -hmm. because everything else takes its place. What's important to do is keep the vision before you by literally keeping it before you. Write it down, even if it's on a post-it note. Don't forget to write today or take a, a famous quote by someone who has about writing or something. Mm -hmm. Put that on your wallpaper, on your computer. Put something on your refrigerator. Put that vision up before you so that Every time you see it, your mind's going, oh, I got to remember to write today. And there is something about that just helps you remember and, and, helps, and you. helps you feel compelled to do it. Now, that doesn't mean that you may do it every day just from that one technique alone, but it keeps it in front of your mm -hmm. eyes so that it's on your mind, at least a little bit every day. And I think that's what we have found over the years is that sometimes just by keeping things on your mind, that makes a big difference. I think that's true. And I think also when you're talking about that vision, it isn't just like finding time to write today, but remind yourself also, in addition to that, finding 
reminding yourself of what you're doing or why you're doing it. Why you're doing it. Are you writing because maybe you're writing your memoir for your family members? Let me tell you, I have friends who received that from their parents and what a precious gift to give them. If that's what people have, that's that's what's motivating you or that's your why, then do that. But it also could be, it, you may be in a business or in a field that you've got some real experience and some knowledge that you need to share. Having that why, that you know what, this could really help people. This could really make a difference. But even if it's just something simple and it's for you, recognize that this is maybe something that's just on your bucket list. And so for you, it's not just remember to write today, but it is what is that vision? You are an author. You are your series is almost done. Something like that, just to keep that emotional connection Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the vision. Yeah, that's good. Another way that you can find time to write (laughs) is by giving yourself a deadline. <laughs> that, that will force you to find time to write. Now, I actually find that giving myself a deadline doesn't work very well. So I will ask other people to give me a deadline. If I ever get a project from an editor, one of the first things I ask them is, what would you like the deadline to be? I want them to give me a deadline because I've had editor, editors before who say, oh, go ahead and just send things in when you can. And what happens is I keep pushing it off. It's too easy to not do it. So you always want to have a deadline when something needs to be done. Find someone to be accountable to, and that works miracles. Yeah, I think that's true. I think that's where you can find that deadline where you maybe even have a writing buddy that you're like, we're going to hold each other accountable. I'm going to be asking you, where is this? You're going to be asking me, that kind of thing. Having that writing coaching Finding a coach that will help you so that every time that you meet together, you've got to have so many words written, that kind of thing. It's just really valuable. Or even a group, a writing group that you could be a part of. We hey, have one. Guess what? I, I was just thinking, <laughs> you know what? We have a writing group. It's called Writing Moments. And if you go to writingmomentum.com slash writing moments, you can find out about our writing group. Mm-hmm. And what it is, we get together every Wednesday at noon central and we write together for an hour. But these are a group of people who are very dedicated to getting their writing done. And if you need to find a buddy, come join us and you can hit someone up and say, hey, you want to just keep each other accountable for our the next chapter we each have to write? And you will definitely find someone. So that's a great way to keep yourself motivated. Absolutely. And we've got people in that group who have said, I got my writing done. I got my book finished. Because I knew that every Wednesday I was going to show up here. And then they would write throughout the week. They would maybe find another time or two to write. And these are not people who are not busy. This is, uh, you know, one person that I'm thinking of was a man who has a family. He's got a young family. He's got a full-time job. But during his lunchtime, his lunch break on Wednesdays, he would make sure to check in with us and he would uh, write together. And so one of his first books was finished during writing moment. Yes. So that was, it, it's not just for the people who have all the time in the world. These are, a lot of them are people who have full-time jobs that are showing up and logging in to write with us during their lunch hours. 100%. So mm-hmm. give yourself a deadline mm-hmm. like that. Find someone who can help give yeah. you a deadline. We'll help keep you accountable too, because we want you to get your yeah. things done. What else, Gina? All right. So the next one is something that the technical term is time blocking. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of motivational speakers will talk about. Productivity experts will talk about. They talk about time blocking. For me, that is really it's about pre plan that I know my week and my mental space is in such better condition when I take time at the beginning of my week. And I a lot of times I do it on Sunday afternoons where I will plan out my week and I will look at what's coming. What time do I have? And I can blog those days and times in to my schedule at the beginning that I know during that day, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write. I'm going to take 30 minutes, an hour to work on this or on that. And that is so, so powerful, I think. What you just said is really, it's scheduling. Mm -hmm. It's scheduling writing on your calendar. A lot of the people who come to our writing moments, they've told us that what works about it for them is that they know every Wednesday at noon, 
that's the time they're mm-hmm. going to write. And, so, and and a lot of times that may be the only time during the week they write because they're so busy, but they have it scheduled. And so they make sure and make it. And you'd be surprised if you write just a little bit mm-hmm. every day or every week. Soon you will have a large manuscript done, right? It mm-hmm. just it takes time. It takes time. But if you if you stay stick with it, it's that consistency that makes all the difference. Mm-hmm. So absolutely schedule your writing. Even if you just need to say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and just I'm going to put it on my calendar at 11 o'clock at night from 11 to 12. That's when I'm going to do it, right? Whatever works for you, five in the morning, if that works for you, find a time that you can write, put it on your calendar and then treat it like a doctor's appointment, mm-hmm. right? This is something you're not going to miss. I'm going to make that time. I'm going to sit down, butt in chair, and I'm going to work on my writing and get some things done. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it doesn't have to be. That's the thing is it's you said 30 minutes, an hour. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a full day. None of us have a full day to sit down and write. Or I would say probably 99 percent of us don't. It's those small little bits that kind of add up over Mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Speaking of small bits, one of my favorite techniques to use for this is called the Pomodoro technique. And we talked about this quite a while ago. You can search for Pomodoro if you want to get a full insight into what it is but essentially it's writing for 45 minutes taking a 15 minute break and writing again for another 45 minutes and and keeping that cycle going and if you listen to that episode you'll find that we have some scientific quotes and proof about this it works really well i love using the pomodoro technique because for me when my day is tight it helps me find time to write because i know if i can just book that 45 minutes to get that writing done it will, it helps me get through it. And sometimes when I have a a big deadline, I'll put on my calendar, I'll time block out three or four Pomodoro sessions and scheduling those Pomodoro sessions. That's what makes all the difference. It really does. It really does. And you think, oh, I got to sit down and write. I need to sit down and write. I need to, that's what's playing through your mind. But when you think, okay, I'm going to pre-plan it, So that I've got on this day, I'm going to take 45 minutes and I'm just going to sit down and that's all I'm going to do. And I'm going to count it as a successful writing day, making that mental shift, Mm -hmm. not, oh, I didn't, I only wrote for 45 minutes, change it and say, no, I got to write for 45 minutes. I did it. Yeah. Boom. And it goes by fast. And it goes by fast. I'll tell you, it goes by fast. So it's not like you're going to find yourself trudging through it. You're going to find, hey, this works. So if nothing else, even if you don't know exactly where you're going to move next, Sit down in your chair, start writing, and just see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So our final tip today for finding time to write is something called habit stacking. And this is another great tech productivity tip that you can use and strategy that you can use. And it also works for writing. Yeah. And that is if you already have, and you do, you already have habits in your life. I know Chris is very dedicated to his morning routine. Mm-hmm. He has a morning routine that he keeps and he goes through probably three or four different things every morning that yes. you do. And what you will do is with habit stacking, you will take something that you were already accustomed to doing. It's already a habit. And you will just add your writing to that. Yeah. Add your writing to that. So it might be, imagine... You know what? Every day during my lunch break, I sit at my desk and I eat my sandwich at my desk. Maybe you work in an office and that's what you do. So instead, what you're going to say is, I know I'm already going to do that. So during a portion of that lunch hour, I'm just going to open my computer and start writing. And that's going to be my writing because you're already going to be there. You already know you can expect it. Your mind is already set that it's a regular thing that you do. So you're just, no, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to finish a certain amount of writing before I move on to what the next step in my day is. Yeah. If you wake up every day and you read for 15, 20 minutes, why not have it stack on top of that? I'm also going to journal for 15 minutes, right? And because your mind is already implanted with that idea that I'm going to be in this chair reading anyway, it becomes a natural extension of what you're doing. And that's a way to get journaling done if you're wanting to journal or you can make it writing time if you want to write i love your idea of when you're even if you're at work and you're eating something at your desk you can say you know what every wednesday when i eat at my desk i want to go ahead and do a little writing here or it could be another time during the day whenever you want to do it you want to have it stack the one habit you already have with another one that you're wanting to build mm-hmm. 
Exactly. That's so good. And it and it, like I said, it doesn't have to be these long four or five hour stretches. It doesn't have to be a whole day set aside. These are just little incremental bits of time that you have that really add up into helping you produce a full manuscript or a regular blog post or journal entries, just whatever. Yes, yes. So, hey, if this helped, we want to hear about it. Gina, why don't you go ahead and all right. uh, go through the points we made the and then we'll bring it we home. Made. We gave you five techniques today for getting your writing done. And so the first one was keeping that vision in front of you. This is not a, the, Chris talked about the button chair. That's not what this is. This is about helping your mindset, about keeping that vision of what you're going to do and really thinking not just about the physical, I'm going to write a book, but about the, maybe the more emotional connection for you or for your reader. So keep that vision in front of you. And then also give yourself a deadline. Give yourself a deadline. And from our experience, it helps to have an outside deadline from someone else. If we try to keep it ourselves, if Chris and I try to keep a deadline for one another, it's not as effective as somebody on the outside keeping it for you. Definitely look at that. Find a writing buddy and or ask your editor or maybe your writing group. Find someone to help you create that deadline. Then number three was pre-planning or time blocking it in your calendar. It's really about scheduling, Mm -hmm. getting it scheduled before your week even starts so that you know on Monday, if you can, on Monday, I know that on Wednesday, I'm going to join Chris and Gina for writing moment. Or on Thursday, I'm going to write at my desk during lunch. Or I'm going to do this while I drop my kids off at soccer. I'm going to bring my computer and I'm going to write in my car for a few minutes. Whatever that is, just go ahead and schedule it ahead of time. Then number four was using the Pomodoro technique. It's really that writing for 45 minutes and then giving yourself a 15-minute break. Writing for 45 minutes, giving yourself a 15-minute break. However that looks for you. It is a proven technique, productivity technique for getting really anything done. And then our final one is habit stacking. Think of something that you already do that is already a habit, that you are already in the habit of doing it, and then just add your writing onto that. If it's like Chris said, reading a book in the morning for 15 minutes before you get out of bed, maybe the next thing you do is you journal. Or maybe you know you're going to eat at your desk on a certain day, so you know that before you get up, you're going to sit there and write for so many minutes. It's just stacking this new habit of writing on top of one that already exists. That's good stuff. If you've enjoyed this podcast, will you share it with someone who you also know is looking for time to write? Mm -hmm. And maybe this will help them to go ahead and just share the link, share The episodes, you can usually do that in the podcast app you're using, or if you're watching on YouTube, share that link there. Also, please rate and review and subscribe to these episodes. If you subscribe to the podcast and every time we come out with a new one, you'll just be notified that it's there for you to listen to. And that helps so many people so much just to know that it's coming. And uh, we hope that for you. And uh, meanwhile, we're going to be here again next Wednesday. And don't forget that together we have writing momentum. (laughs) Bye-bye.